All right, welcome to the first video in my Star Wars reading project. Again, just to recap, my plan is to delve deeper into the lore of the Star Wars mythology by reading the novels of the expanded universe in chronological order. And with every book I read, I will release a video to highlight a moral lesson that I learned from each story. And with this video, we'll be starting at the beginning of the timeline with Dawn of the Jedi Into the Void, written by Tim LeVon. Uh, and this story takes place roughly 30,000 or so years before Star Wars and New Hope. Now, in this story, Dawn of the Jedi, uh, it follows Lannery Brock, and she is a member of the Ancient Jedi Order, J-E-D-A-I-I, -I, the Ancient Jedi Order, which is a precursor to the more widely known Jedi Order, okay? And as the story goes, Lannery has to stop her brother, a cult leader named Dalian, from activating this hypergate that could possibly uh, open a black hole and destroy their home star system and potentially the entire galaxy. Now, I don't want to focus too much on the details of the story itself. The story itself was fine. But like I said in my introduction video that I released a couple of days ago, my purpose here isn't to critique the story. My purpose is to focus on a moral aspect from the story, an ethical principle that, that stuck out to me that I could explore from a biblical perspective, a Christian perspective. And in this book, what really stuck out to me was the idea of spiritual balance. The fact that Lannery used both the light and the dark sides of the force to achieve good and bring about peace. Now, if you'll remember the more modern Jedi order, they shunned the dark side of the force, okay? They treated the dark side in and of itself as something that is evil and it's something that should be rejected outright, but not the ancient Jedi. They instead sought to achieve a balance between the, the both sides, the dark side of the force and the light side of the force. They didn't sway too much toward the light, nor did they sway too much toward the dark. Instead, they sought to harness the more positive aspects of both sides so as to achieve an internal balance to their spirit and aid them in their pursuit of the good. Now, if, if you're like me, uh, you're going to have to put aside all your preconceived notions about Star Wars and, and recalibrate your understanding of the Force as a story concept. For the longest time, I believed the light side of the Force was good and moral and should be embraced, while the dark side of the Force, I believed that it was evil and immoral and it should be refused outright. I used to think this way because I equated the Jedi, the heroes of the story, with the light side of the force. And I equated the Sith, the bad guys, with the dark side. And I assumed that since the good guys have fully submitted themselves to the light side, the light side therefore must be good. And since the, 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 the bad guys have fully submitted themselves to the dark side, the dark side therefore must be bad. But as I've learned in this book, this is not the case. The Force is all-encompassing. It is both light and dark. It's a mixture of both. And a person striving to live in harmony with the Force must learn how to strike a balance between its light sides and its dark side. I've learned that the modern Jedi Order was wrong to embrace exclusively the tenets of the light side and avoid the dark side altogether. Just as the Sith were wrong to exclusive, exclusively embrace the tenets of the dark side and totally avoid the light side. The light side is not totally good, and the dark side is not totally bad. Therefore, the proper way to approach the Force is as Lannery Brock and the Ancient Jedi Order did, with balance, by mixing a proper portion of the light side with a proper portion of the dark side. Now, I, I want to pause for a moment and explain what I mean by balance. And, and let me begin by explaining what I don't mean. When I say balance, I don't mean a little bit of good mixed in with a little bit of evil. I don't mean a balance of, of virtue and vice uh, or, or an equal measure of truth mixed together with uh, 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 lies to, some, to, to form some sort of agnostic cocktail uh, of morally neutral pragmatism. That is not what I mean when I speak of balance. So what do I mean? When I say balance, I mean spiritual balance. Achieving a philosophical balance 
taking a completely rational and balanced approach to your individual pursuit of the good. Pursuing the good, pursuing justice and righteousness uh, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I mean using everything you've got within you, all your love, all your hatred, your courage, your fear, all that peace, anger, patience, aggression, all that is within you and using it to achieve the objective good. Here's what I mean. A person in spiritual balance has the ability to act diplomatically like a civilized man in a civilized society. But a person in balance also has it in them to take up arms and use force when necessary to preserve the peace. Say when, when, a, when a violent person poses a threat and forces him to physically defend those things that he values the most, uh, like his life, his own life, his family, his convictions, his property. A man in balance wants to achieve the good. He wants to preserve the peace. He works hard to live a quiet, godly, and dignified life, one that is good and pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, as Paul said in 1 Timothy. And when some irrational thug comes along and threatens that peace and starts causing harm and refuses to be reasoned with, that same man of spiritual balance has it in him to respond to the thug with force of his own. Not some rage-filled vengeance, but in rational self-defense, in pursuit of righteousness and justice, so as to keep the peace in a moral and rational way that pleases God. Now, I want to point out an example of this a concept from the book Dawn of the Jedi. Lannery Brock, she's a Jedi, Jedi protagonist, and she was a seasoned diplomat who brokered many peace deals on various planets, okay? But one planet, uh, the planet of Skygora, this Wookiee warlord and his army tried to illegally take control of the forest there. And Landry stepped in and tried to find a civilized and diplomatic solution to the problem, but the Wookiee thugs refused, and they responded to her peaceful efforts with unprovoked violence. And in doing so, they forced Landry's hand they forced, forced her to use aggressive yet controlled physicality uh, to settle the matter and reestablish the peace. When the Wookiees initiated force, Lannery had no choice but to respond with rational force in kind in the form of a laser cannon. Uh, she took out the Wookiee thugs in order to prevent a violent civil war from erupting and causing greater death and destruction. Lannery's job as a Jedi Ranger was to keep the peace. It was her responsibility to help curtail conflict and to prevent war. Uh, and in this instance, she did the right thing when she tried at first to be civil and peaceful in her dealings with this gang of Wookiees. She didn't go into the situation, you know, flexing her force muscles and, uh, and, and, and go in with guns blazing and shooting first and ask, asking questions later. Her primary aim was to find a diplomatic solution to the problem. But when all her diplomatic and, and civil efforts failed and, and violence erupted, the Jedi Ranger was ready and able to use controlled brutality to put an end to the Wookiees' violent and illegal activities. She was able to use that violence to restore peace and justice to the planet. She was able to act virtuously and achieved the good because she was able to strike a balance between the light side and dark side of the force. The light side represents peace, order, control, uh, ordered thinking, uh, while the dark side represents the more chaotic or emotional elements of human nature, anger, fear, aggression, uh, love, passion, attachment, th those sort of things. Emotions are chaotic in the sense that they can come and go sometimes without rhyme or reason. But emotions are not bad. They are not bad if you keep them in check. They're actually quite useful once you learn how to control them and harness them and use them as your allies rather than letting them dominate your life like some kind of tyrant. No man needs to give himself over to his emotions. No man needs to allow himself to be swallowed up in his emotions to the point that they make him act irrationally or immorally. That sort of thing leads to erratic behavior and can result in great personal harm. 
that's what the Sith do. The villains of the Star Wars universe are one of the villains of the Star Wars universe. They give themselves over exclusively to the dark side, to their emotions of anger and aggression and greed and hatred to the point that those darker emotions start to consume them. Fear can be an ally, just as anger and aggression can be your allies if you learn how to keep them in check and use them as proper motivation to accomplish the good and achieve your values. In Dawn of the Jedi, Lannery used her personal attachments, her emotions, her passions. She used them as an asset in her mission. She knew that her emotions, her love, her fear, her anger, her aggression, if she kept them in check, they could be of great benefit because they could help her achieve her goal of stopping her brother and maintaining peace and order a force wielder, somebody who uses the force, they can fall out of balance real quick when they stray too far to the dark side and give themselves over to their emotions. They, they allow their emotions to dominate them. But a force user can also swing too far to the light when they uh, try to be too emotionally detached and a see, achieve some sort of monastic detachment from reality. That sort of emotional detachment is unhealthy. And it can throw your spirit and your life out of balance real quick. As Lannery proved in the Star Wars universe, a force wielder honors the force by striking a balance between the order of the light side and the chaos of the dark side. This is a good lesson, especially for a, a Star Wars novel. I must say it's quite deep. But the, the real question here is, what does the Bible teach about this topic of balance? To answer that question, I want to turn to the Sermon on the Mount, Mount in Matthew chapter 5. Specifically, I want to look at verse 5, Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, in which Jesus says, Blessed are the meek, blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, this word we've translated as meek or gentle in the Greek, the word preis, uh, which, uh, as you can see here, means it means something more than our modern idea of meek. I think sometimes in our, our, our modern, when our modern ears hear the word meek, we tend to conjure up this image of someone who is soft, uh, gentle, passive, as someone who is, is harmless or even weak. But as you can see here, that's not the kind of man Jesus was praising in the Sermon on the Mount. Um, the New Testament is written in Greek. And the Greek word praise, uh, the word we translate into English as meek, it, 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 the, the English uh, definition of meek doesn't really line up with the the defin with with uh, the Greek definition of meek, the, what Jesus intended. The definition of praise is grounded in the difficult to translate root uh, pray, which means uh, something more than our modern concept of meek. Uh, biblical meekness is not weakness, but rather it refers to exercising God's strength under His control, i.e., uh, demonstrating power without undue harshness. The English term meek often lacks this blend, this balance, i.e. of gentleness, of reserve, and strength. So that word meek there, it connotes a, a, a balance of gentleness, reserve, self-control, and strength. So you've got the ability to be gentle, but you also have the ability to be strong and to use force. And uh, a meek person knows how to blend those two. A meek person knows how to find a balance between those two. Uh, the Greek word signifies the necessary balance of exercising power and avoiding harshness. So you want to exercise power, but you want to avoid harshness. It involves a proper and temperate display of the right blend of force and reserve, gentleness. It means having strength in gentleness and avoids unnecessary harshness, yet without compromising or being too slow to use necessary force. For the believer... Proetis, meekness, is the fruit, the product of the Holy Spirit's presence in a person's life, i.e. it is never something humanly accomplished or simply biological. It is, in fact, proof of God's power and presence in your life. When Jesus commanded his followers to be meek, he isn't commanding them to be wimps. He is instead commanding us to reflect his image. Since we claim his name, he wants us to represent his character accurately. And Jesus is no wimp or weakling. Jesus is gentle, but he is also capable of great harm when the situation calls for it. If you think Jesus is some passive wimp, 
and you've never read the book of Revelation, read Revelation 19. When Jesus comes and spills the blood of his enemies with great anger and terrifying vengeance, and tell me if you still think he is some kind of pacifist. Read that, and you will see for yourself that Jesus is most definitely meek, but he is not weak. By that same measure, if we're going to apply that measure to our lives, a meek man who is properly reflected reflecting the image of Christ, is a gentleman. He's a gentleman, a gentle man. But he most definitely is not a weak man. A meek man, by Jesus' standard, is a powerful man who is capable of inflicting great harm. Yet he makes the moral choice to treat others with civility and respect. A meek person is not harmless. He's not puny. He's not helpless. A meek man, a meek person, a meek woman, to use the words of Jordan Peterson, is a civilized monster. A meek man is civilized, yet he has it in him to be a monster if the situation calls for it, but a controlled monster. These are the types of people who will inherit the earth, as Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, because they have proven themselves to be wise stewards. The Apostle James, uh, in the book of James chapter 1, he tells us that every good and perfect thing on this earth is a gift from God. And God has given us these gifts, our, our lives, our families, our country, the truth, and, and every virtue that springs from it. God has given us these things with the expectation that we will use these gifts wisely, that we will be good stewards over them, that we will, we will, we will protect and cultivate these good and precious things that he's given us, these valuable gifts that he's given us. He expects us to, to nurture them and, and to cultivate them and even protect them when the time comes. He expects us to preserve and defend everything that is good with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Now, that doesn't mean a Christian uh, should be a wimp or a doormat. Nor does it mean that we should act like some hyper-aggressive bully. It means that a true believer, a true Christian, is a warrior. He is a true knight. He is a true peacekeeper. It means being a person with a hard edge who is capable of delivering a gentle touch. There's, there's another example of this uh, ethical concept from the book, from Dawn of the Jedi. At one point in the story, uh, Lannery was, was chasing an assassin uh, through the streets. This assassin tried to take her out, and she was chasing him. And as she was chasing him, they chased him into this crowd of people. And during the pursuit, the assassin killed some innocent bystanders, just flat out murdered them in his attempt to get away. And uh, Lannery is trying to catch him and, and find out who he's working for and to put an end to his murderous rampage. And the book's author, Tim LeBon, he does a great job here of describing her inward sense of balance, her use of dark side emotions like anger and aggression to help her squelch the threat. Uh, anger throbbed through her, he wrote, but she reined it in. It would feed her actions. It could also cloud her senses. Using the force while harboring rage could upset the balance within her, and that would lead to mistakes. So Lannery didn't shun her anger. She didn't shun uh, her desire to use force to stop this guy. She instead channeled it, and she used it to uh, accomplish the good. She stopped the assassin because she was able to harness her dark side characteristics of anger and aggression and passion, and she was able to combine them with her light side characteristics of order and harmony, and, and, and she was able to provide protection and stop the bad guy's rampage in order to uh, restore the peace and bring about the good. She found a balance between the two, and as a result, she did her job. She uh, restored the peace. If you look at some of the other Beatitudes here uh, in Matthew chapter 5, you can see that Jesus rewards people like this, people who make the moral choice to pursue peace first with civility, but people who are also capable of using force when necessary, people who use those passions, people who use their emotions, they channel them, and they use them to bring about the good. They use them to give them the motivation they need to achieve justice and righteousness and peace. Uh, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who have a strong desire to do what is right. Uh, blessed are those people who, who have a strong desire to do good, 
and who are aggressive in their pursuit of righteousness and justice, those people who hunger and thirst, those people who are aggressive in their pursuit of righteousness and justice, for they shall be satisfied because they will use all their heart, soul, mind, and strength to achieve it. They will not let anything stand in their way of pursuing righteousness. They will be satisfied because they will use everything they've got, every tool at their disposal to achieve the good. Blessed are the peacemakers, those people who use every moral tool at their disposal to provide protection uh, to, and, and to keep the peace, for they shall have the honor of being called sons of God. Our communities, our states, our country, our society at large needs men and needs men and women like this now more than ever. At the time I'm recording this video, it's election day. And the polls are, are open. They're still open. It's early in election day. And no matter who wins, I think we're going to see people, to put it mildly, act in very uncivilized ways. I agree with my friend Cody Leibel when he said on his Facebook page that President Trump is going to get reelected. And the Democrats will then litigate for months. And people will protest. And thugs will destroy millions and maybe even billions of dollars in property. And maybe they'll even turn violent toward other people. And, and dear God, I hope that is not the case. But it could be. And uh, now more than ever, we need men and women, particularly men, good men, who are willing to work hard to keep the peace, to do so with civility, to act like gentlemen in a civilized society. But people who are also prepared to physically stand their ground should the need arise. Men who, uh, to quote uh, Dylan Thomas, men who will not go gentle into that good night, men who will instead uh, stand firm and will rage against the dying of the light. Those are the kinds of men that we need. Those are the kinds of men that will uh, protect what is good, protect what is true, protect what is beautiful, and will set this country back on the right path. If you like this video, uh, please check out my book, Manhood as a Mindset, Fatherly Instruction from the Wisest Man Who Ever Lived. In the book, I use the wisdom of Solomon to teach my son what it means to be a real man. I talk about this same civilized monster theme in the book in a chapter in, in which I analyze the character of Batman and use that as an example to explain Solomon's concept of how a wise man is supposed to act. The book's a good read for fathers and for sons alike, so check it out. It's available at Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and Christian Book. I'll put a link in the description below uh, so you can check it out. Anyway, uh, I hope you learned something. I know I sure did. Uh, anyway, go out there, vote, save the country, take a stand, take care, and stay safe out there.